Hey guys, I'm Tom Tech Chap, and this is the brand new flagship Vivo X80 Pro. And to be honest with you, it's one of the most exciting phones I've used so far this year. Now, to be fair, I have only had a few hours with this. It arrived yesterday afternoon, so it is very much a first impressions, but I wanted to walk you around it, talk about some of the camera tech inside because it's frankly a bit overwhelming, and also just give you some of my first impressions. Now, as you would expect for a premium flagship phone, on paper, this ticks all the boxes. Snapdragon 8 Gen 1, 12 gigs of RAM, 256 storage, although not best in class sized 4,700 million power battery. So considering we have some pretty beefy specs and also a big 6.78 inch Quad HD Plus 1 to 120 Hz uh, LTPO screen, battery life is definitely something I'll be testing properly in my full review. Although what I can tell you is that we get this in the box, the 80 watt uh, flash charge. Every brand has their own name for their super fast charging. Uh, and this should top up the phone in about half an hour from zero to 100. And also we get 50 watt wireless charging as well. Straight away though, you can tell what really makes the Vivo X80 Pro stand out. I mean, just look at that camera module. I must admit, a small part of me still wishes that some of this big glass square could be hiding a small viewfinder screen, but sadly not. Although there is still an awful lot going on here. We're getting a quad lens setup, and they've also had some pretty big input from the camera nerds over at Zeiss. It's actually quite refreshing to have a genuine partnership between a phone and a camera brand. I mean, it's hard to say exactly how much input they have, but it seems to be a lot more significant than some other phone companies, <coughs> OnePlus, <coughs> House of Blood, uh, which just seem to add some filters and uh, color profiles in a pro mode. This goes an awful lot further. So here's the setup, four lenses with a 50 megapixel main, a 48 megapixel ultra wide, a 12 megapixel dedicated portrait lens, which is very interesting, plus an eight megapixel five time zoom periscope lens. But that really is just the start. We also get Vivo's custom ultra sensing GNV sensor for the main lens together with what's called a Zeiss T coating on the main lens's glass to help improve image quality. And there's even a dedicated chip inside here, the Vivo V1 Plus, which is mainly there to help improve low light video. It's actually very similar to what we saw in the Oppo Find X5 Pro uh, with its Mario Silicon X MPU, which also was a bit difficult to actually understand what it did, but essentially it improved the noise reduction in low light video. And again, I think that's what we're getting here with that V1 chip. And it works by offloading what would normally be handled by the Snapdragon chips ISP. So we get much more effective and also more efficient noise reduction in video. We also get this specific Zeiss gimbal portrait camera, which for me really makes the X80 Pro stand out as right now, I think we can pretty much all agree the iPhone is still best in class for video stabilization. This may be able to give it a proper run for its money. So the X80 Pro already uses OIS and EIS, but this is the first time, according to Vivo, that they've added a specific portrait lens that has its own built-in gimbal to improve handheld video recording, and also enabling night portrait and also sports portrait modes. So any kind of fast movement, panning, following quick moving subjects, like if your kid's playing football or something, or your dog's running around, it should all be a lot smoother with this setup. They've also incorporated some features that you'd see in something like this, the GoPro Hero 10. We get what's called 360 horizon leveling stabilization. So no matter how your phone rotates as you're holding it, the horizon in the video doesn't move and it sticks to that horizontal line. And so hopefully your video looks a bit more, well, professional. Night photos and videos should also be significantly improved on the X80 Pro with that sharper anti-glare lens coating, the V1 chip for low light video, and also with their XDR photo tech, which essentially gives us much better HDR in low light photos. There are so many options to play with, and also we've got filters, the cinematic mode, which gives you a wider aspect ratio, which is, well, more cinematic. It's all fun to play with, but to tell you the truth, I do find the camera app just a little bit confusing. There are so many options and modes, and it's not all immediately obvious what different things do. To be honest with you, it's all a bit overwhelming. I feel like I've barely scratched the surface with this camera. And it's also hard to know, in a, among all this marketing guff and all these buzzwords, just how much of an impact these technologies actually have and whether they're you know gimmicky or actually something you'd use every day. So again, like the battery life, 
I'm gonna have to spend some time with this to really get to grips with this camera and see if it can take on the likes of the S22 Ultra, the Oppo Find X5 Pro, indeed the iPhone 13 Pro Max, because on paper at least, this has one of the most interesting and unique camera setups I've seen for quite some time. And I am really excited to actually have a proper play with it. But of course, it's not all about the camera. Vivo has actually added a ton of gaming and performance features to the X80 Pro. If I jump into a bit of Apex Legends that you can now get on the Play Store, as you would expect, it runs flawlessly. And you can pull out the game side menu if you want to tinker with any of the settings. Also, behind the scenes, we get new enhanced LPDDR5 RAM and also enhanced UFS 3.1 storage, which according to Vivo are all slightly boosted or overclocked from their sort of standard speeds. And together with the Snapdragon 8 Gen 1 and a proper liquid cooling vapor chamber, which helps to keep everything nice and cool and keep the dreaded throttling to a minimum, altogether, this could be one of the fastest and most powerful Android phones you can buy. Look at this as well. It's not usually the most exciting thing to talk about, but you can see we've got this new 3D ultrasonic fingerprint reader, which is uh, the next generation ultrasonic, I think built by Qualcomm, because they actually teased this a couple of years ago, but as far as I know, this is the first phone that actually comes with it. So not only is it a lot faster, they say 0.2 milliseconds, it's also much bigger, so you're less likely to miss it, and it actually supports dual finger authentication, although I can't say I know any apps that actually require that yet. Oh, and finally, I should say that you can actually get this in any color you want, as long as it's black. Well, cosmic black, apparently. This is the only uh, style color that you can get, although I do quite like this matte versus glossy contrast in the design. It's comfortable and I think it stands out. Although, as I say, I would love if this also acted as a bit of a viewfinder so your subjects could see what they looked like as you were taking a portrait. So as I say, first impressions of this are a little bit overwhelming. There is so much going on and it is an incredibly feature-packed phone. And I think it will go toe-to-toe -to -toe and possibly even knock the S22 Ultra off its perch as the king of Android phones. We'll have to see. So make sure you do stay tuned and subscribe for my full review and comparisons coming very soon. And also, if there's anything you'd like me to test or try with this, let me know in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching, guys. I'll see you next time right here on The Tech Chat.